Let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 16 to 20. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the sixth week in Eastertide. St. John writes, Jesus said to his disciples, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. That's from John chapter 16, verses 16 to 20. What does it suggest to us? Well, it speaks of the unseen Christ, of course. You know, I remember attending a spiritual retreat on one occasion, and included in the program of the retreat were some discussions. One participant in the retreat stated that a real difficulty for her in living a, la a life devoted to Jesus Christ was the fact that she could not see, hear or touch him. If I am to be a friend of him, which is what the Christian religion states to be of the essence, then I want to be able to see him. Mary Magdalene at the tomb was granted the grace to see him and to hold him. Our Lord said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. The disciples were able to see and hear and touch our Lord. It was granted to St. Paul to have seen the risen Jesus in a vision on the way to Damascus. As a result, he was very real to him. But I will never in this life see him, and that is very difficult for me. What is to be said of this lament? Well, to begin with, it is the characteristic difficulty of the modern age, which tends to think that the only things that exist are things that are empirically verifiable. We are naturalists, which is to say that we moderns tend only to accept the reality of the natural world, and anything supernatural is assumed to be nothing more than a phantom. It is a metaphysical, this that I refer to, this naturalism, is a metaphysical position that is fundamentally an assumption. We assume it. And it is probably due to the influence of the great scientific advances of the modern era, which have tended to make us unconscious adherents of scientism, which is a belief or assumption that the methods of natural science, or the categories and things recognized in natural science form the only proper elements in any philosophical or other inquiry. The overall upshot is that due to our cultural starting points we have a special difficulty in appreciating the unseen world as being truly real. The notions driving our modern culture sweep us along in the quest for tangible benefits while things spiritual and unseen are ignored forgotten or positively dismissed as basically fanciful. As Karl Marx said, they constitute an opiate for the masses. That's what religion is. Well, there is no getting away from the fact that while Jesus Christ is real, he is unseen. Of course, religion in general is connected with unseen things, even though those unseen things are usually represented in some way by material things, which constitutes the danger of idolizing those material things that represent the unseen. But Jesus Christ is a real living man who rose from the dead, and the Christian religion is all about having a true, vital and profound relationship with him precisely as living. He is not a past teacher who lives in his teaching and who influences by the memory of his exemplary life. He is a present teacher, a present master and lord, who is brimming with life, and who is far nearer to each of us 
than was possible during his mortal life. But he is unseen. As we read in the Gospel today that I read earlier, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? What it means is that the Christian must take daily steps to fortify and support a life of faith in the word of Jesus Christ. If his faith in this word becomes weak, then his dependence on the things of this world will grow. And in proportion to this, the unseen will appear to be unreal. We must take active steps to help ourselves to realize what we believe. We must put a little time each day into reading the words of Christ and the inspired records of his person and deeds. We must put time each day into formally placing ourselves in his presence and with the aid of those inspired records, the Gospels, communing with him. We must endeavour consciously to live in his presence, for in fact we are in his presence, though we do not advert to it. We must actively do what we do for love of him and in the way that pleases him. We must, in sum, live as his friends, as friends of one who is nearer to us than is possible for any friend in the flesh whom we can see. This will not be possible unless we live according to a plan of life entirely geared towards this. Every morning, let us, on rising, immediately place ourselves in the presence of our unseen friend, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, glorified, and at the right hand of the Father. He is near within. And placing ourselves in his presence, let us offer him everything in the day to come, resolving to do all in a way that will please him, which is to say, in accord with his most holy will. Let us place ourselves in the care of Mary, his mother, the mother of the Lord, our Lord and Saviour, and in the care of our guardian angel, assigned by God to accompany us, to accompany us on our way to him. Let us do all we can to ensure that though Jesus Christ is unseen, our faith is such that he is every bit as real to us as if he were seen.